Josh of Cavalier, AthleteNext.com. So are you ready for the hard truth about how big your biceps are going to be? I don't care how hard you train them, there's a test. The test is the finger test. It's going to tell you everything you need to know about how big your biceps can be. You ready to take it with me? Get your arm, sit up, get your arm here, bend it 90 degrees, and then put your finger in the space here between the end of your bicep and your forearm. Can you get one finger in there? I can't. I actually need to put more than one, so I've got two. Two fingers fills the space for me without overlapping. Some people might even be able to put three in. The idea is, if you can fit more than one, you're in rough shape, my friend, as far as how big your biceps can get. But before you start getting really, really depressed about how big your biceps can be, let me ease your mind a little bit. The test is bullshit. See, a lot of times people will spew this advice out, we like to call it bro science, but they'll spew this advice out in the gym, and it does nothing but discourage you from wanting to train and train hard. And I've seen people tell me, Jeff, I can't, I stopped training my biceps because I have a three finger gap there, which means I'm never gonna have a good looking bicep. That's bullshit and you never should have stopped in the first place because the advice is wrong. All you're trying to do here and all you're actually getting information on is how the muscle bellies sit in your arm, how long are your muscle bellies genetically. It is a genetic component. Our muscle belly length is genetic. However, that doesn't mean you can't develop what's there. If you have a shorter muscle belly, supposedly more than one finger, two finger muscle belly, you're going to have a shorter looking bicep. But guess what? If you develop it, it's going to peak. It's going to come up and become a peakier bicep, which a lot of people prefer in the first place. If you have a longer insertion here, you're going to get one that actually fills this gap up. You're going to have one uh, finger gap in there. And if you develop that, you're not going to have as tall of a bicep, but you're going to have a fuller bicep. But none of it should discourage you from training it in the first place. Bad advice if you've ever stopped because of that. So what you can do is you can influence the shape of your bicep because of the fact that your genetics are dictating how long or short your tendons are. But your development of your bicep, guys, that's just, devel- that's just hindered by your effort level and the amount of effort that you put into your workouts and training your biceps. So here's the last little bit of advice for you. Number one, obviously don't ever get discouraged about it. Number two, if you happen to have a longer bicep but you wish you had a peakier bicep, all you have to do is start training that long head a little bit more. And we can do that by getting our long head in stretch with an exercise like an inclined dumbbell curl. It's going to preferentially hit the long head of the biceps and allow you to get that backside a little bit taller, right? And maximize what you have. You're already lacking that height because you have a longer, fuller bicep, but it doesn't mean that you can't try to develop the weakness or the weaker area of your bicep. You could also do that by having your hands in closer while your elbows are tucked while doing your curls to try to hit more preferentially the outer or longer head of the bicep. And for those that have the peakier bicep but are wishing they had a little bit more fullness, well you could do exercises that place your biceps out in front of you. Put your arms out in front of you like a spider curl. Right here you can actually hit the short head which is going to add some more bulk and beef to the biceps as well as the obvious hammer curls. You might have to do a lot more hammer curls than somebody else just to try to beef up the bicep by bulking up the brachialis underneath. You see, there's always a training strategy, but you're never waving the white flag because some test driven by bro science is telling you that you're doomed because you can fit a finger or two or three or four or whatever. Guys, I hope you found this video helpful and most of all, encouraging because you should never let that kind of stuff dictate how you train. Always train hard and no matter what, I don't care how you look, what the shape of your arms are, genetically what the shape of your muscle bellies are, you're going to look damn good if you train and eat right. Head to athletenext.com right now if you want a training program that puts the science back in strength, tells it to you the, right, the way it is, no bullshit. It's over at athletenext.com. Day by day, meal plans, workouts, everything you need. In the meantime, if you found this video helpful, make sure to leave your comments and thumbs up below. And also let me know, have you tried the test? I did. I fell for it way back when I was in high school. But I promise you never again. All right, guys, I'll talk to you again soon. Oh, by the way, one last punchline. You want to know another guy who's pretty good? He had a two-finger gap here in his biceps. I'll leave you with a picture. You might recognize who he is. All right, guys, I'll see you again soon.